Good afternoon, Jason, and good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Crucible Final and the biggest day in the snookering life of Kyron Wilson. Thanks, guys. Can he overturn this three-turn deficit and join the snooker immortals whose name adorns that coveted trophy? It's a big ask, Ken. He's he sticking in there, and from 8 2 down yesterday, he's right back in this. Oh, yeah. And what an atmosphere, John, for both players, and what a reception. You can feel the tension in the air. Really looking forward to these opening exchanges this afternoon. Lots of questions, lots of answers. What sort of mindset is Ronnie in? And can Corrin? Make that comeback. It was a precarious position for Corin Wilson when he went 8 2 down yesterday. John really was fearing the worst for him, but you know, made a, got stuck in, didn't he? And really dug in and made some wonderful frames to make this really tough match. Yeah, they call him, his nickname is the Warrior. He certainly stuck in there yesterday. He wasn't at his best playing wise, but. Sometimes it's not about that. It's just about getting your nut down, mm. sticking in there when it's not easy. And he did that all right. Not too much between the two players and the pot success. A little bit low, you would have to say. Usually in the 90s, you'd want, but it was an awkward session last night. Both players struggling a little bit. Beautifully off that bottom cushion and nicely on the blue. That will certainly send out a signal. Yeah, and what will send out a bigger one is if he scores plenty because it's a really good chance. This Reds are lined up like soldiers on the right hand side of the pink. Black's potable. I mean, you've got to be ready to go from ball one. This is a big Six. chance. This will tell us it looks like the black is potable in the left corner as well as the right corner. Seven. Mm, just a tiny bit under hit. Shouldn't be a problem. It'll screw cannon into the reds above. Oh, that's gone wrong. He's not on the red into the left corner. OK, he's got a red into right centre, but he was hoping to be on the red, just left of the black into the same pocket. Red to right centre, maybe up for blue or pink here. Yeah, yeah, nice recovery, and it'll be interesting to see how you know we saw th that miss red John that could have cut the deficit to just one frame. I mean, if ever you get over missing a ball like that, it's to start off on the front foot, isn't it? And here's that red that was basically to just cut the deficit to one. Yeah, I suppose. The only good thing out of it was the last frame of the session, so you could get out of the place. But, mm. but yeah, just today is a new day, simple as. And he looks fresher than he did starting this final. Understandable if there'd been a bit of reaction after that match with Anthony McGill. If that doesn't take something out of you, you made a wood. It was one of those sessions that 21. was incredible. And the way to win a match like that, I've never seen a frame ever played at the mm -hmm. Crucible. Well, anywhere. It was just bizarre. Oh, he definitely suffered a bit of a reaction to that one. 22. Yeah, I think both players did. I mean, Ronnie at the end last night looked very jaded, very tired. He looks a lot fresher today, though. Karin trying to get on the, maybe the red, just above the black into this right corner pocket. 
Yeah, it's a funny point when you talk about snooker, saying people are getting tired and everything. Because, I mean, Ronnie would be as fit as any of the snooker players playing because he's an exceptional, exceptional runner, very fit. But mentally, this is the game that takes it out of you. Mm. And last night, he, well, he, looked, he looked bushed. He really did. Twenty-eight. So not too much to do with the cue ball, as both players have potted 248 balls in the match. All about the close control, and I do think that's a feature today, Ken. Just occasionally, cue ball's not quite as good as some of the, the top boys. We keep 35. mentioning it, but it's it's a pertinent point. If Karen can keep it 36. under close control, it just makes the game so much easier. Very true. He's such a good potter. He leaves mid-distance reds as if they're over the pocket. You know, chance to maybe go into the pack here. Yeah, that's okay. He's brought another red into play, and he's still on this red into the left corner. <laughs> And this break obviously made by an absolutely corking opener. What a shot this was. 51. Beautiful shot. Fifty-two. Oh, 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 oh. That wiped its feet a little bit, didn't it? Knocked three times, see? Eh? Fifty-nine. Yeah, break goes to fifty-nine, so red-black will be sixty-seven. He's going to need one more red and... That red shouldn't be a problem. It's in the open. 60. Mm, a little straight on the black here. Should be okay though. 50. Yeah, it was a noticeable last night in the session. The table wasn't at its best, that's for sure, for whatever reason. It looked a bit heavy, but 67. the cushions were also pinging off quite a bit, which was a strange combo. Not one that's easy to control the cue ball with. So it looks a lot better today already. <laughs> Knowledgeable crucible crowd as ever. Good on their maths. Mm, just a, didn't generate Seven enough pace ten. into the pack of reds. Just touching ball. Yeah, it's a touching ball, so it's not too bad. He can play away from it. Yeah. And then if he can bridge here, might be a bad idea to... I would be pushing the green on the side cushion, me. It's obviously touching the red, so you can Gavin do that. Wilson, seven, and just three. get up in the air and push the green on the side cushion, but he's played another shot. Yeah, green or yellow, or even the blue, he could have maybe pushed into a safe position there, Ronnie. We'll play on for snookers. Needs two four-point snookers. It looks like he may have left this red into this bottom right-hand corner pocket. Yeah, good shot. Looks pretty sharp. Opening exchanges. One. Yeah, and Ken, two nice long pots, which is very important. Something his opponent wasn't doing yesterday. One in the frame. Karen Wilson. Absolutely fabulous start from Karen Wilson this afternoon. Lovely long red, and that break is 73. What a great start. He's two behind at 10 8. Karen Wilson loves it. The family love it as well. The Warriors come up fighting, Stephen. First priority of the session, win the first frame. Um, stamp your authority in the session straight away. And he did with an unbelievable long red. 
Um, this the cueing from tight in the bulk cushion. I mean, you know, look, watch the head. Head still. That is just. I can't tell you how difficult that is to do. That is just magnificent. Especially given the occasion, Steve. Yeah, and, like, you know, you, you hope to be presented with a chance, but that's the type of shot, you know, if it goes wrong uh, and you, you, you overcut it a fraction, the white ends up bump, bumping into reds and you're, you, you look like you've sold the frame. But when it goes in, and you don't know, you just hope it goes in, really, for the first, especially for the opening shot, it's a great feeling when it goes in the, the heart of the pop. ..as well during that break as well. Just a puff of the cheeks from Kyron as he's walking around the table as well, just getting into the environment, just getting into the atmosphere. Yeah, well, he'd be nervous, uh, but that, that, that nerves is something you can channel into the, the, the shot and your adrenaline's pumping. And, and if you're not nervous, that's the worst mm. sometimes. Like Ronnie O'Sullivan, but by the end of the last night, was not nervous at yeah. all. He was deflated with his yeah. performance. You cannot play this game flat. You need the adrenaline pumping. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I meant by you know, feeling sick and feeling nauseous before you got out. You got that huge build up um, and, 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 you know, towards the end, end of your probably saying the end of the career, you, you've not got that. You can't perform properly. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a very strange game. We're in the, in the, just watching on the screen there. Ronnie's having a bit of fun. Something's happened in yeah. the room, I'm not too sure. Oh, apparently, awesome. apparently some music was playing. Disco Inferno, apparently. Great. Oh, it's awesome. a good choice. Perfect. It's perhaps, a good choice, but maybe... Perhaps the person who wins... Music, isn't it? <laughs> Sean's going to walk in. Perhaps the person who wins a frame can choose the we music. We don't mind a bit of Disco <laughs> Inferno on your phone or whatever, but surely not in the middle of a showpiece sporting occasion. <laughs> well, I think they need to sack that one off immediately. <laughs> I like a bit of disco like the next man can, but not in the middle of this. <laughs> Oh, now Corin Wilson was enjoying it. He was dancing away, boogieing away in his chair. Certainly, let's see. Yeah, Ronnie was saying, "What's going on with the music <laughs> with this going fair now?" He's saying you're going to play music after every frame. <laughs> no, not here. Someone needs to take the batteries out of the oh, machine. Where's this red going? Where's the red going? Oh wow! One. Wow. And he's on the black. It's not nice, the black going into a blind pocket. He's got it, though. Good pot. <laughs> Have a look at this. He's just trying to free the black up. It hits the blue half ball. And creeps into that left centre pocket. Oh, there's nothing worse when you're sitting there and you're just on a run and you're hitting the ball good and you feel like you're going to knock everything in and one of those happens. Momentum stopper. No. Yeah. Look does play a part in sport, of course, and it can sometimes be the difference between winning and losing. It just remains to be seeing what Ronnie can make of that bit of fortune. Taking the blue here, make cannon into the yellow and free up that red into the same pocket. Oh, is he on it? I don't think so. Didn't get the right connection on the yellow. There's a big shot coming up, Kent. Last night, couldn't buy a long ball. If you can't see that near the yellow, Red on the right hand side. Well, he thinks he can just sneak it in with a bit of side. No, so here's that shot we were on about. Mm. Last night he wasn't hitting the jaws. A tester early for Ronnie O'Sullivan here. Yeah, good yeah. shot. He didn't have to play it with pace. And that may have helped, but. Big shot here, black into the reds. It went in. Yeah, it's noticeable with that long shot that Ronnie played the, the drag. As we show him the split 20. into the pack. I think he's on the bottom red there. Yeah, when he's played that long red, he's played it with a drag as opposed to the hard stun or the screw. They were the ones he really struggled with. This one, when he drags it, still a very good shot, of course, but. His percentage is a lot higher playing it that way. Yeah, good shot. And now, 
there's a few loose reds to play on here. And how crucial will that fluke turn out to be? Sometimes it's not the look, it's what you make of it. Thirty. Both players look better, Ken, don't they? I was just going to say, he looks a lot fresher today, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And this break will tell a little story about how he's feeling. And let's not forget from Ronnie's case as well, he's had an extra match. I know it was an easier one where he beat yeah. Tepchaya 10 1, but Karen got a bye in the first round from Anthony Hamilton not playing, so he's played a bit more snooker. Thirty-nine. Well, that's a, an interesting stat there. He's he's played more matches, Ronnie O'Sullivan, but he's actually table time has been two and a half hours less than Corin Wilson. That's an incredible statistic. He's played that nicely for Red to. Left center. 46. Well, problems start to arise here. Where's the next? He's got to get a nice angle there. He's putting the cue down the table just to try and get a nice angle on this pink, maybe, to go into the pack. He's taking a couple of shots ahead here. 47. Now, what sort of an angle and what sort of pace can he generate on the cue ball here to go into the pack of six reds he's a little grimace may have to come off the cushion how's this look this time it's not good so hasn't won the frame from this visit 53 but he does have a very healthy 53 point lead Ronnie Sullivan, 50. Yeah, nice break. I'd be disappointed he didn't win the frame from that position, but he may have left Corin Wilson a, a cross double here, John. A safety shot. But this red could go very close to this left middle pocket. It's going close now. Not Kyron's turn to fluke one in the middle. I fancy knocking this one in myself, Ken. <laughs> Don't get too carried away, John. He's having a little giggle to himself. It's a good sign, actually. He seems relaxed. One. Yeah, I'd be disappointed where that red finished. I think that's what you have to do, John. I mean, he's playing in his first world final. Oh, that cue ball's travelled on too far. He's not on this red. So there's still a glimmer of hope for Karen Wilson in this frame. Ronnie Sullivan, six. That's amazing. The small margins can make the difference between winning and losing the frame. I mean, if you ask somebody to play that positional shot and leave it right there, you couldn't do if you tried. The one time he's played it, it's just glued to the red. And it comes down, must think it's going to be perfect. And the one place you can't pop one is right there. This is a long way away. This is a poor Five shot minutes. from Corrin. He'd seven. be very disappointed. That huge margin for error there. Ninety-two. Too hard. Well, wow. what has he done there? Try and put the black safe, but oh, that's a 
bad error there from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Didn't judge the cannon on the second red. Yeah, very unusual for Ronnie after that 53 break. He's had two chances amongst the balls and lost position both times. That'll annoy him. Ronnie O'Sullivan. One. Trying to get the black tight to this top cushion behind its own spot. Well, hasn't two reds into the right centre. Karen Wilson's had a quick look at them. Are they a planter? Can he make them into a plant? No, he doesn't like it. Going to the far jaw of the pocket. Now, does he play the one down in the middle of the table near the yellow, or does he try and get the cue ball behind this black off the bunch of reds here? Come on, you're crafty, Ken. What is, what's he going to play? Well, I'd like the red probably. It's down between blue and yellow, back down this end of the table. He's 64 behind, 75 remaining, so doesn't want to be knocking all the reds up into the bulk area, so try and keep that red down this end of the table and try and get a snooker on one of the ball colours. Yeah, really had to sort of semi-sacrifice the cue ball there, couldn't really get it in directly behind the yellow, just trying to get ball cushion. Those the only thing for Karen is that black's in the way if he tries to play it as a shot to nothing, Ronnie. Which is why he took the other red. Well. Kyron, you've had two long pots today and you've knocked both of them in. Straight in the middle of the pocket. If you can make it three, this is a chance. Half ball red, put it on the side cushion. He's always going to leave this red here. Yeah, good pot, nice kiss on the black. Wow, what a chance for a counter clearance here. Yeah, his long game is A1. And a frame that he looked absolutely dead and buried in. He's now been given a lifeline. Oh, lovely shot. That's a lovely shot. Just flicked out the outside, left himself on the red in the middle. Eight. Opened up a couple there. side of the blue here. Hmm, that's a mistake. So you mentioned it on the other occasions. You had to make sure the cue ball stayed top side of the blue there. That was the priority. He's trying to get on that red at the bottom of the bunch into this left corner pocket. He may be forced into taking. Well, he was having a look at green or brown there, but Blue, with a lot of bottom left-hand side, try and swing that cue ball in and out of bog. Oh, this looks pretty good. Has it run too far? Has it gone too far? Needs to slow up. 14. Mm. He's a bit unlucky, just a couple of inches shorter. He would have been perfect. Trouble is, though, Ken, it's the shot before, isn't it? Mm. You keep leaving yourself high tariff shots to recover. At some point you're going to miss. Is the red on to the left center? Maybe. It certainly is. Good shot, and he's on the pink. Great shot. <laughs> yeah. That's a recovery.
Yeah, I just can't quite see how close that pink is to the red. Obviously, it is potable. That's the shot he's played for. And put all the hours of practice you've ever put in and all the to tournaments you've played in. This is one of your most important clearances ever. Missed it. Karen Wilson, 15. Well, I didn't see that coming, to be honest. Didn't expect him to miss that, and that's just pressure. Nothing else. Well, he's One. gifted the frame now to Ronnie O'Sullivan, and it'll be a very relieved Ronnie O'Sullivan. Only thing is, he's done all the hard work, hadn't he? Yeah. Played a, you know, a shot on the blue there, cracking clip Eight. in the middle pocket with the red. And really, Nine. bog standard pink for these players. I think we're going to have a lot of frames like this, John, in this final. A lot of swings and roundabouts for sure. So 16. tense out there, so dramatic, but seventeen. Real pure sport. Yeah, that's what changes score lines, isn't it? Winning those frames you shouldn't win. And for all the world, he looked like he wasn't going to win it, then got thrown that lifeline I mentioned. And well, the great champions, they nick those frames, don't they? 24. They certainly do. Make a huge difference. A couple of times now, he could have got to within one frame. 27. But the gap will go back to three for Ronnie O'Sullivan. 31. But both players looking a lot fresher, a lot sharper. And that's good signs for the rest of this final, for sure. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Even though he's had a couple of chances, he still looks a lot better than he did last night. 42. the second frame and holds on to the advantage. He leads Karen Wilson by 11 frames to eight. So apparently they were playing Disco Inferno in the arena and burn baby burn. That's what we want. A bit more of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think karen has got to take these chances if he's going to win this final. He can't afford to be, you know, that's, you won't get many chances to pinch frames of Ronnie O'Sullivan and really hurt him psychologically. And that was a chance and... You know, sorry, winning, you know, winning frames when you get in yourself is important, but get pinching those frames, that makes a difference. Yeah, it was a big opportunity, wasn't it, Steve? Yeah, he'd done so well up until this moment, and he'd given himself the chance at the pink. It was a bit more of a cut than he would have liked, but it was, you know, a judgment shot. But you expected him to get it. He'd done a lot of the hard work. He'd have been distraught to see that go to the far jaw, and he knew he'd missed it as soon as he played the shot. Um, it does seem like the tempo of the match has just moved up a gear. Um, you know, the, the final day, you'd expect the, the, the adrenaline to be pumping a bit more. And uh, last night was a bit flat. All of a sudden now, it looks like they're both being far more competitive. So uh, he's not out of it yet. But as, as Stephen says, you know, he's got to get back on level. Looks fresher, looks more up for it. Some, sometimes in, 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 the, in the world final, it's over two days, four long sessions. Sometimes the first day, he can be like treading water a little bit. You know, you know, you can't see the end in sight. Today, obviously, they can see the end in sight. So it's like, OK, we've got to, got to do something, got to switch on now. Um, both players seem more alert, more, more up for it today. Maybe it was mental fatigue after what they went through with those wonderful semi-finals, Steve. I mean, great for the viewing public, great for us, but for players, I mean, it was like torture at one stage. It was really tough. And, you know, Ronnie was struggling by the end of the, the night and, and Karen had sort of got back and, and had his moment uh, later, later on. But I think, you know, coming out today, they probably both had, had reasserted the resolve they need and uh, sort of had a talking to in the morning, saying, right, OK, big push to now, go for it. OK, back we go to John. Okay. Yeah, still fascinating part of this match. Byron's mm. long game is absolutely firing, which is always good because he can create his own chances. And you've just got to stay positive. Mm. You're in that chair, Friends say, 20. if you're going to miss, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to clear up. And you have to have that inner belief or you won't be winning that wonderful trophy.
Not a bad break off, covering the red down the right hand side table into this bottom right hand corner pocket. So Ronnie won't play in the safety shot, he's got to avoid that red on the right hand side. And he's got to try and cover it because he knows how good Karen Wilson's long ball game is. Now he's got he's cut it, just touched it, just managed to still get it back to Balk, and he'd be happy with that. He has left this red. Wow, this would be a tough one to take on. If your long game was working as, well, as good as that, would you refuse her? No, definitely not. He's two out of two so far, and he's pretty good at this shot. Playing it with, well, he can either hold a cue ball or play it off two cushions. So straight with his cue action. Just spotted something in the crowd there. Yeah, something he hasn't had to do for the best part of the... 10 days. Have a distraction from the audience. Oh, that was close, but unfortunately, they don't give you anything for that. Probably thought that was the end the minute he hit it. Looked good. As he left this red into the left center pocket. There's a red at the bottom of the pack as well, but I think it's the red into the left centre. Nicely on the black if he gets it. One. Yeah, nice shot. And he's got a nice angle. He can go into the little bunch of reds directly above the black. He'll still be on the red to the right corner. It doesn't have to hit it with pace. It's a delicate little stun, yeah, perfect. And this is where Ronnie O'Sullivan is at his imperial best. Eight. Nine. Don't you even think of calling a maximum, by <laughs> the way. <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan, I'm sure. The frame is of paramount importance for us, but that's two reds, two blacks. 16. 17. And he's got another three or four reds in the open there for another three or four blacks. But at this stage. Frank. Frank. Uh, once again, there's something in the audience. I was just going to say at this stage, the frame is much more important. Yeah, it was much more important to John Higgins the other day as well when he played Kurt Mafflin, but he went ahead, seized the chance, and made that 147, the first one that we've had for eight years at the Crucible. Worth a couple of bobcan as well, it was. Yeah, 15,000 for the highest break and an extra bonus of 40,000 from the title sponsors, Beth Fred. This red left of the pink goes into the right centre. And if he screws 32. back for black here, he needs an angle when putting this red on the black. 33. Maybe one loose red. The red above the black to the left may be potable into the right corner. Yeah, nicely on it. And he'll go down for black again. And this is where he needs a nice angle, John. 40. 41. Now, needs a good split. Blessed with wonderful cue par. It's not ideal pack, but always need a little bit of luck here. Yeah, wasn't ideal, unfortunately. And that's end of break. 48. Yeah, he was desperately seeing if that red on the right-hand side could be potted up into the yellow pocket, but he's not on it as we see the attempted split. And it does look like end of break. Ronnie Sullivan, 48. 
Yeah, hit the wrong red on that break. And tried to split the reds. Didn't get any screw on the cue ball. So has to settle for a 48 break. May be able to play a little snooker here. Corin Wilson can drop the cue ball right behind the blue. Yeah. Very, very good indeed. Okay, would it really need to get tighter to the blue to stop Ronnie O'Sullivan coming off two cushions and nestling into this pack? I mean, just got to be careful here. Yeah, don't want to hit it too hard and try and knock a red into play. Yeah, judge nicely. Good shot. It's touching ball this way. Yeah, you can see there just on the very last moment of that cue ball, it's touching that red, so play away. Yeah, that's the one it's touching. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you can get the cue ball somewhere down the left-hand side of the table here, John, you know, beside the yellow, he will block all the reds down this left-hand side. And he could put Ronnie in a little bit of trouble. OK, the pack is quite tight, so Ronnie would still have the two-cushion escape, but try and get distance with this cue ball. Somewhere in the bulk area down behind the yellow would do. Needs to travel. But he's got the pink there as a blocker as well. So the reds will be blocked down this left-hand side of the table. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. He was originally going to play the red that's next to the pink. Push up and down, I think, but decided to come off two cushions, as Ken mentioned. Following him is Karen Wilson, four. Yeah. Don't know whether he thought about the double there, maybe it <laughs> would have been a shot to nothing. Highly unlikely to be left anything here. Kyron will be just expecting to be playing a safety shot. Not touching this time, so he's going to have to play the red, but... Once again, try and get the cue ball down that left-hand side of the table if it's possible. Maybe not this time. <laughs> well, that's one way of getting down the left-hand side of the table. And playing the snooker. <laughs> Didn't see that one. I can't believe you never <laughs> such that. You, you thought, everyone told me you were a good tactical player, Ken. <laughs> Amazing. Can happen. But once again, just pack is just too tight. Now I wonder, is the possibility of the... Well, maybe not. He's having a look at the red into the left centre pocket. What that would be. Very risky. Well, he's having a look to see if that one will go in the middle, but even if it did, he'd have a job getting out of the pack. <laughs> you have to put in so much force. Suppose there's a little pathway there, mm -hmm. not like the opening of the Red Sea if it goes through there. One. Pretty good. And what a shot he's played there. Well, have a look at the gap he's got through those five reds. Have a look at this. Just enough. Wow. Excellent shot. 
Oh, so much for me saying there's no, you won't be leaving anything gone. <laughs> Couldn't see how he was possibly going to get a chance from that with the pack being so tight, but there you go. Seven. And a good chance too. Eight. Failed in the last frame in his attempt to mount a counter clearance. So important, these frames. You've got to win them if you want to be world champion. You've got to try and pinch them when you haven't looked like winning one. Fifteen. Yeah, important times already in this final for Corin Wilson. A little bit short of pace, so he's going to have to pot this and go through the pack with the cue ball and still be on the black. And that's nicely played. 16. Brought those reds into play and it was nicely judged. Love those slow mo camera uh, shots. Shows the Cue ball and reds bouncing around the table. Couldn't hold for the two reds into the right corner, so he's going to have to take this red into the left 23. corner. Yeah, I don't know whether he tried to play a little cannon there. And the two reds that were near the pink spot and didn't get enough side on it, but I can't see him knocking this in. 24. Once again, no. Cue ball. A little awry. Definitely is Achilles' heel, unfortunately. <laughs> Every chance he's going to knock it in, but really did need that cue ball the other side of the blue. So another good pot needed here for Corin Wilson and. Good position on his next colour. So proficient with this particular type of shot, and he looked very sharp already with the couple of long pots he's knocked in. Don't expect him to miss this, but he's got to get top side of the blue. Oh, I didn't expect him to miss it at all, but there was Got a bit of pressure on it. No. This is the, mo the point I'm making, and it's. Well, it seems like I'm harbouring on about it, but he's under the most pressure he's ever going to be, be, be under playing snooker is in the world final. And that's why the importance of the cue ball control is absolutely paramount. I mean, he should have really been behind that in a shot you couldn't miss. One. If you keep giving yourself too much to do, you will come unstuck. Just could have been a lot easier that red. Ronnie hasn't played the best shot there. Okay, he's on the green to let middle. That might be a little bit straight. He's on the brown. Well, he's got a slight angle on the green, so he can get up to these reds above the black. Nineteen points in the lead. So. Four. These three reds around the black should do. Won't need Thank that you. red close to the right hand side cushion. Noticeable thing, can of course, is he's not really having to work for his opportunities, is he? Mm. You know, he's last two well, frames, it's been because Kyron's missed. I had one 13. good mid-range red where he dragged it in, but other than that, he hasn't had to knock a long ball to get in. His opponent's been giving him table time. And when he's close in, he's as good as anybody. Yeah, he certainly is. 20. There's a different look to Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's quite evident already this afternoon. He yeah. looks really up for it today. Yeah. And 
And not just the evidence of cold steel on his face either, having a shave today. Mm. He just looks better in his whole demeanour. 28. The two frames really, if Kyron Wilson's going to win this World Championship, he had to win at least one of them, I feel. Mm. Can't keep having half chances against this fella and not taking them because he'll come second best. Yeah, and any other day, Kyron 34. Wilson could have won. All three opening frames. And he's lost two of them now. He's got to score a bit heavier. 39. Well, his body language at Fuck. times last night didn't look good, sending out the wrong signals, but today. He's sending out all the right vibes to his opponent. 48. Mm, this is a beautiful shot. Lots 54. of the left hand side down for the black. Yeah, the black goes in. Sullivan puts another frame on the board as Carlin gives him a glaring stare as he walks back to the chair. He now leads Karen Wilson by 12 frames to eight. And you get the feeling that is a key frame of snooker. Two pundits in the studio, raring to go with some analysis. Steve? Well, yeah, uh, Karen Wilson has just given Ronnie O'Sullivan the green light uh, to go ahead and win this at a canter. It, it, it involves a positional shot that Kyron Wilson, at this level, should have played on the black. It wasn't the easiest shot in the world, but he had to play a cannon on the two reds by the pink. He basically dotted the red in, sacrificed any type of a position, and all of a sudden left himself, at distance, a red that then went wrong. OK, it was a thinner cut than maybe it looked, but he had to commit to the proper positional shot. And by doing that, he, Ronnie O'Sullivan knows that he's not in the same league uh, yeah, Curran's yeah. not in the same league as him in the positional sense. Yeah. Curran's potted every ball, isn't he, Stephen? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in, in, in a way, it's, it's you know it's a kind of a, almost an amateurish shot to play. That you, you know you, you, you're just making sure of the black to leave yourself a pot at a red, where either putting the black dead weight or just a little bit aside, just to keep the, the cue ball tight on the two easy reds, just makes things a lot easier. And consequently, a couple, the next red, he loses position in the blue, forces to play a red from distance, misses, and hands the frame to... Yep. Interesting stuff from those two blokes in the studio. Well, they've only won 13 World Championships between them. I don't know what they're going on about. Comes top side of the blue, he's perfect. <laughs> Whether he played that cannon or not, but he just was short on the blue, and that was the end of it. I can understand him saying about the cannon, but he had chances to move that a little later if he'd have come on the blue. Anyway, that's gone, mm. and it's a four frame gap that Kyron didn't want to see. Such small margins, isn't there, John? If he comes top side of the blue, he's banging perfect position. This cue ball has to be better, has to score from those positions. Yeah, and it, and it sounds like an old record, but it, as I say, he's under the most pressure playing here. He mm -hmm. wants to be the champion of the world, and he's playing in the biggest match of his life, so his positional play is going to make the next shot easier if he gets it right. And it just... Keeps running away from him a little bit, that cue ball. And eventually, he ends up missing one. Hasn't quite been tight enough in this match. I must say, though, I like his attitude. He seems to be enjoying the, and relishing the the battle with well, probably the greatest player that's ever played the game. He's not afraid of the challenge. He seems to be loving every minute of it. Yeah, I mean, it's 
4-2 for Ronnie in matches, but the last three times they've played have all gone to final frame deciders. And the last one, Kyron won 6-5, so he'll match him up if he's given the chance. One. And Ronnie knocked an excellent red in the middle pocket, so the safety shot from Kyron wasn't the best. Hoping for a little kiss off the red there, but he's still okay. Always had this Eight. red to the right corner. I must say, totally agree with Stephen Hendry. He's hitting the ball a lot better this morning, this afternoon. It seems to be a Nine. crispness and to his ball striking, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, he was really poor in his long game yesterday, but so far today, he hasn't had to use it. Certainly no long stuns or long screws. And you know what he's like when he gets close in. So everything going well for him so far. 16. Oh, wow. Just as we Ronnie speak. Sullivan, 16. Where did that come from? Did not see that at all. Not a good cue ball, should have been tight to that ball cushion. Now here's a test for Ronnie O'Sullivan. This is where he has to use a bit of pace, John. Yeah, wow. much better, much better. And that will send an ominous sign to his opponent. That was a tester, cued beautifully, right in the heart of the pocket. Well, here's my answer. I was asking the question, would it be any good when he was faced with the first one? And you couldn't hit that any better. That wouldn't have hit a jaw last night. Beautiful strike. The cue ball. Dead straight, gun barrel straight. Mm, he's going to need a, another good one. Didn't get the desired reaction on the cue ball to come back for black. So, a bit of pressure on this pink into the top right hand corner pocket. This is another little test there. He's got to take it on. The yeah, good thing is he's taking his time about it. <coughs> Getting himself ready. Big shot, this. <laughs> Two great shots in this boat already. And right next to the blue and that pink. Both outstanding. Well, he was on the belt, trying to buy a cue action online. Maybe, maybe it's been delivered. So far, so good for the five-time champion. Yeah, if he was straight, he could possibly run through with the cue ball, but may have to stun it for the black here. Well, he's still played the run through. 14. And he's played it very nicely. Uh, 
Yeah, these top players, when they get encouragement, 21. they don't need much of it. I say the last two frames, he hasn't been punished. For the opportunities he's given. 22. Hate to say it, but if he'd given those to Mark Selby, I think he'd have probably lost both frames. Kyron's just come up short in those last two frames. When Ronnie gets the run on you, it takes some stopping. Mm, certainly does. One red in the middle of the bunch here. He's got to try and drop on. Well, looks to be on it nicely. And this will free up 25. the two above the black. That's his target, 68. So another four reds, four colours. 28. Well, that frees up the red just above the black and when he pots that that will free up another red so it doesn't have to do much work here Ronnie O'Sullivan Thirty-five. Thirty-six. it's amazing John it's completely different Ronnie O'Sullivan we're seeing today Mm, could have come out a little better. 43. He's on one, but it's going to be the spider. Well, he's looking at this red into the right centre. It's a bit more difficult. Cute angle into this middle pocket. Is it there? Is it there? Oh, <laughs> just about. Any more pace on that red and it wouldn't have dropped. Mm, beautiful little shot that, wasn't it? Little screw with running side around the angles. Makes the, when you see it, just go into the far jaw and having to think 51. about it before it eventually drops in. Makes you even more amazed he missed that red earlier in the frame. Yep. We give our two learned colleagues in the studio a bit of stick before. I think Steve might be right. I think he might be given the green light here. It's like Ronnie's been actively encouraged to kick on. Yeah. How much will he rue those? A couple of misses. Corin Wilson still a long way to go though in this final. He's missed this. Red, will Coran come back 57. to the table? Yes, he will. Yeah, still a long way to go, though. You know, he's still going to need five frames to be champion of the world. That's what you have to think about when you're sitting in the opposite chair. A long way to go in this final. Anything can happen. We've seen it over the years, John, many, what? many times but it's going to take a momentous task from Corin Wilson, Eight. for sure. 9. It's not beyond, though. No, I totally agree with that. I just think he needs to find a little bit of that form he had against Judd Trump, where he, I think he won 9 frames. That might not be coming. He'd love to leave the red behind the pink last because it's a straightforward snooker. I'm not quite sure he can do that now. Let's see. He needs to get a lot of action on this cue ball. Try and get close to the red near the cushion. And Garden was well, he's missed the black and his chance is gone in this frame. Seven. So, mid-session interval coming up and probably 
Good time to regroup. Eight. Chat with his brother and his grievances or whatever he needs to do. Well, I was just going to say to you, John, if you were in his dressing room now at the interval, what would you be saying to Corin Wilson? Don't miss. <laughs> Simple as, he's got to score. He's certainly got to keep the cue ball as Ronnie misses the yellow, the and that'll be enough. Frank Aaron Frank. nods his head. And Ronnie O'Sullivan will be delighted with his afternoon's work so far. He's in three of the four frames, and he extends his lead. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads 13 frames to eight. Mid-session interval, plenty for Kyron Wilson to think about. Ronnie O'Sullivan closing in on another world title, Stephen. Mm. Well, that's that's the scoreline that Kyron wanted from those four frames, 3-1, not, not the other way around. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's hard to see. You know, I mean, I, obviously, I said it after the first session, but it's definitely hard to see a way back for Kyron now. He's had chances, he hasn't taken them, and Ronnie's it just looks like getting stronger. Yeah, long road back for Kyron. Yeah, and, and he's queued beautifully. It's just two mistakes. One, uh, the, the, the judgment pink in the middle pocket, that when he really had a great chance in that second frame. And then, you know, the positional play went astray. Uh, and at this level, those, those errors, uh, sort of fundamental errors, we net would, would view them uh, are, are, are sort of dangerous for your opponent. So he's, he's, he's going back thinking probably he's a bit flatter now than he was at the start of the session. Mm. Yeah, but if you're Ronnie, you, you picked out some shots as well. Well, this this is what he wasn't doing last night, um, and hasn't been doing actually through the, the whole tournament really. This, I mean, this was just beautifully struck. I mean, you have to be very accurate. I mean, you know, the, the, he's wow. obviously obsessed with cue actions at the moment. You need you need a good cue action to pot them like that, I tell you. And this one was a more of a pressure pot, much easier than the red, but had to get it because you see what he's, he's leaving on. So. Yeah, he's it's, it's, it's looking more and more comfortable out there, run more and more confident. And he, he'll sense that, you know, that, that the match is, you know, his, his opponent's starting to miss a couple. And that gives you, when you know your opponent is not going to pinch frames off you, it just makes you feel so yeah. comfortable. Yeah, you relax into it. Maybe Ronnie had that online delivery after all. Maybe so, yeah. Um, but, you know, this, the, 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 the margins are very small. The margins are very small. But probably from, from Karen's perspective, and as Stephen has mentioned in the past when judging players, talked about Neil Robertson in the past saying he needs to up his positional play. How you do that is difficult, but you know, not necessarily back to the drawing board, but perhaps uh, a rethink and perhaps you know, get on the phone to Stephen for some positional yeah. advice. Yeah. This is at the highest possible level. <laughs> I'm criticising somebody who plays a far better game than I did in the 80s. You know, yeah. it, it's just as you see is it. Is your phone off? <laughs> <laughs>
So the first thing for Kyron is to make a good break off. Ronnie's knocked a few long ones in. There's no black available, no pink available. This would require extremely good queuing. Similar situation for Kyron. Red. Onto the left corner. What sort of angle has he got? This was the attempt here, but uh, didn't even rattle it in the jaws. But let's have a look what Kyron yeah, he might be able to get back up for the blue here. Nice pot right in the middle of the pocket. Couldn't have struck it any better. He's not come nicely in a colour. Should be able to drop on this red to the right of the pack. But now already the problems Wait. start where they can just screw the cue ball back off the red beside of the one he's going to pot back up the table for blue or bulk colour. Nice angle on the yellow to get into the reds. Yeah, the angle Stephen was talking about is to pop the yellow off the side cushion and anywhere in there with a little bit of power and he could develop maybe the pink or even the black depending on the pace he hits it at. It's a key shot this. Doesn't want to hit the pink. Wants to miss the pink and go into the reds directly. Beautiful shot. Couldn't have played it any better. And how's your luck? Not bad. Okay, it's awkward. Six. A little sarcastic nod to the head. Couldn't have played this any better, Dennis. It is a, a wonderful shot, and he did free the pink as well. And plenty of power. No problem with the red. He's hampered, and it's the position. That's all he could do, and he's faced with Seven. a very difficult pink now into the right middle pocket. This is a key shot also coming up. Yeah, there's lots of pressure on this. Mm, Overhit it. Oh, where is the pink going? Has... Where is the pink going? Thought he was going to fluke it. But maybe he's blocked the pocket. Yeah, but he overhit this, didn't he? Purely with the pressure. Yeah, as Stephen said, just hit it much too hard. But look where it's finished. Yeah, Ronnie's had a fluke today, and that's almost as good as a fluke for Kyron Wilson.
would have cost them the frame. You would think there's a possibility of sending that red in off the pink. The only thing is, if you do that, the pink's then removed from the pocket. The black's tied up, so there's no real value in it. And that's probably why Ronnie didn't bother with it. Karen's having a good, long, hard look at it. Very high tariff, even if he does squeeze it in off the pink, he wouldn't be guaranteed position, so he's quickly forgot about it. Oh, look where the red's going. Good cue ball. Ooze and ahs from the crucible crowd, but he, that's exactly what he played. Didn't play to get in behind the green, but played to hit cushion first. I think the crowd thought he'd missed the ball completely there, but he had a little bit of side. He judged it very well, but it was a bonus to get over behind the green there. Very congested. Not a lot the players can do with that pink over the pocket. Still coming to have a look to see if he could get that in off the pink. Yeah, if you got your, your cue and just hit the red, you could get the red past the pink, no problem. But from this distance, very tough. was always One. going to be the problem. He did well to get the red in off the pink, but just had no idea what was going to happen with the pink. That's broke the stalemate, though. They could have been there for a very long time. Yeah, we could have had one of the frames that re you really enjoy, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Brandon. Aaron Wilson Walk. Well, 
Well, that's the mistake that Kyron's been waiting for. And it's not a bad chance because the black's available. In a few shots time, OK, the red to the right of it's a little awkward, but he can soon get up amongst them here. One. Now, though he's five frames behind, he hasn't done all that much wrong, Kyron. Just a couple of little mistakes, position, and that easy pink in the right middle. Bit unlucky, he was trying to cannon the other red there. Four. I mean, if he hits that red three-quarter ball, he would have been perfect on the black. Now he's got a bit of a problem. Very difficult to get back up the table off the black. In fact, I don't think he can. That's why he's thinking of nominating the brown. As you can see where he's pointing the tip of the cue. Brando. Yeah, the line to the brown is as if you were trying to shoot the white off the cushion into the corner pocket. And you can see that there on that picture. Gonna have to have another four. go at it. And a miss, Karen Wilson, four. Ronnie Sullivan, four. Uh -huh, that's quite a difficult shot from where the cue ball's landed, I think. If Ronnie wanted to put Karen back in. Yep. This is a nasty shot here. Just thinking, though, if he had replaced it there and he misses the brown again, then he's only got one more shot, otherwise, he could lose the frame because he could see the black. Yeah, if he clips his red in as well, Ronnie won't be happy. One. Almost a beautiful shot using the second red. Just holding the cue ball for the pink to the same pocket. Mm, this is tricky. The only thing about playing that shot is he knew the Ryan paint was Sullivan. staying over the pocket. So it was going to be very unlikely he was going to leave anything on for Karen Wilson. Took the pressure of it a little bit.
Well, we thought the frame had opened right up again with the pink being removed from the corner pocket. Look where it is again. So it might need a little bit of sorting out this. Ronnie knew if he missed the pot, he was going to leave some sort of red to the right middle. But as long as he got that cue ball to the cushion, it was going to make it a very difficult pot. needs to pull up otherwise he's leaving the red for the middle pocket and he has done don't blame Karen for taking the red onto the middle pocket but he didn't quite get the white where he wanted one Eight. Sullivan, wrong side of the blue, so having to play this red from a bit of distance. 14. And again, a little bit strong. Okay, he's got the pink to left middle. Top. He's totally different character to last evening. He looked very tired, lost his focus, lost his cue action. But I think with all that practice he's put in this morning, well, you can tell he's much more focused and his concentration levels are much higher. <laughs> yeah, he's obviously found something cue and wise technically that's made him feel a bit better today. We've not seen any of the gesturing with his, when he goes back to his chair over the last two or three days, semi-final and yesterday, with his arms six. gesturing that he's not happy with his cueing. It's a much crisper strike he's got today. 27. He's not having to work very hard for 34. his opportunities to win these frames. It's generally been a pretty comfortable final for Ronnie. 35.
Yeah, we showed it a few times, the red that uh, Kyron missed to close to just one behind was a big, big turning point. 43. He showed it a few times, he only really needed that and uh, he was only one behind. Just played to get out onto the black to make absolutely sure. 50. No double, but that doesn't 60. really matter. Frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan <laughs> extends his lead. That's another one on the board, and he leads Kyron Wilson by 14 frames to eight. It's looking good for Ronnie O'Sullivan fans. Wonderful cue ball control from Ronnie. Yeah, but I, I, I have to say, I agree with Stephen there, what he's saying. Um, he's not really having to work too hard for his opportunities. He's too talented to be giving him table time that Kyron's giving him at the moment, and... Uh, He's broken the back of the match, you'd have to say, but I'm, I'm like an old record in this, so I can't help myself. But I'm sorry, but he's played a yellow you have here. To, John. I've got yeah. to, I've got to say you it. I was here. He's on the yellow here. He's got three reds that all go in the right-hand corner pocket. This is an awful positional shot to leave himself having to use the rest. He's got another foot there. He can get closer to the green. He comes down on the three reds, and he's in the middle of a break. So, to have to use the rest with a shot like that, it, it's just making it harder for himself. He's in the heart, in the most. Difficult situation anyway, and I know what the scoreline is, but he's not making it any easier on himself with his cue ball. Off the hook, off the, off the rope, so to speak, and you give yourself too much to do every time it catches up with you. And he knows that as he's sitting there. He well, knows that. he obviously does, and he's, look, he's not trying to <clears> play <throat> bad position on purpose. Of course he's not, but that's the difference between the two players. You're, you're right, John, at. it's levels. That's what we're talking about. Well, yeah. well, well, one man's got the cue yeah. ball under perfect control and the other one's letting it go after two or three shots, and it's, hey, it's the difference in the scoreline. Absolutely. Ronnie Sullivan to back. I'm just looking at the five times Ronnie's won this title. 2001, he beat John Higgins 18-14. 2004, Graham Dodd 18-18. Ali Carter 2008, 18-8. Ali Carter again 1811 in 2012. And in 2013, 18-12 against Barry Hawkins. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to make a case for anything other than another comfortable win for Ronnie. Early stalemate here with that red up the other end of the table. Get a re-rack. Unless he's got a touching ball. Thank you. Foul. You could see that was a foul shot. Side of the queue just catching the other red there. At least to solve the problem, we won't have a re right now.
That's the shot he'd love to play. He's got to make sure he gets it right and covers that red that's between the yellow and blue, but doesn't like it. Not the best shot from Ronnie there. White should have been a lot nearer to the cushion. A lot of pressure on this shot, though. If he tries to cut the one into the left of the yellow. Not guaranteed position, so he's had a look at that. And changes his mind. One. Well, Ronnie decided to take the one on that Kyron thought about. As I say, it wasn't guaranteed where the cue ball was going to finish, but it was a, a very good pot. But they're slightly easier when you're leading 14-8. Well, this is going to... Bring everything into the open. Reds are going everywhere here. Six. Seven. One century in the final, which is well, it's 12. I find it incredible, but obviously didn't really play well yesterday. 13. Especially last night. This is a chance here. He's got the black in the open, reds in a nice position. We're on 79 centuries so far, and the children's charity, Jesse May, gets £200 for 80. every century. And if we get to 80, Sponsors Betfred will give them an extra 20. Well, it'll make up 25,000. So, one more century for that to happen. Nineteen. Just totally his comfort zone out there. He pretty much knows. Now, a little lesson to amateur players out there and playing that shot. Instead of just trying to play for the blue where you could land short, Ronnie played it with a bit of extra pace to make sure he was going to be at least one of the three bolt colours. So the blue's an option as well. So whenever you're playing that shot, over hit it rather than under hit it.
but play it with your correct hand. Don't switch hands like Ronnie did there. <laughs> I mean, to pull that shot off with his left hand. 56. That's a bit special. 57. No cannon play there because you won't need those reds. Sixty-three. Red at the back of the four is available, as well as the one to the right of the black. Just a bit closer to the res than he was intended. This red, I believe Karen Wilson need a snooker. And it looks like another frame. The one with Sullivan. 66. Two more frames to play. Can't win it in this session, obviously. That can get 71. to within one if he wins both of them. Got 17 8. Sullivan, 71. At the moment, <laughs> from his reaction, he thought he'd potted that. Kyron needs two four-point penalty snookers to tie. Had to come 17. back for the black there, otherwise he would have needed three snookers. No use just running through for the pink there.
24. Karen Wilson, 24. Yep, Frank conceded. Frank Karen Wilson. concedes. Ron O'Sullivan takes another frame. Leads 58. He's only three frames away from his sixth world title. He most certainly is. And Steve, we saw this yesterday evening with Ronnie when he was potting balls when he couldn't win the frame. Well, I don't know what's going on there because um, there's no way Karen Wilson should have been even potting the last red. You need to keep the last red on the table for three balls uh, with the, the amount of points he needed from snookers. It, it was as if he wasn't clearly thinking. Unless he was just trying to knock them all in for the practice, of course he wasn't trying to do that. It, yeah. I really don't understand what happened there. But uh, poor thinking at this level as well. He, you know, I feel like I'm digging him out all the time here. It's like, you know, he's playing great stuff, cue action wise, but he's made some wrong decisions. Well, you're here for your punditry and your analysis mm. and to it's speak a very the truth. strange one. I mean, the one thing you don't do when you need that number of points in a penalty is get rid of the red. Exactly that for free ball, so I don't know what he was thinking of there. It's far too easy at the moment for Ronnie, isn't it, John? It's comfortable. Um, it's Kyron's first final, as we know. Uh, he's up against the best player who's ever held a cue. It's intimidating. But he hasn't got his best stuff, and that's that's the biggest issue. At this level, improving your positional play, it's a learned behaviour. Uh, you'll have a technical coach, but it, it gets to the point where you need a positional coach. But you know, I tried to improve my position, couldn't do it on my own. You need some help. You need somebody who actually is a better positional player than you to give you the information. It's been done before, because I can tell you, Mark Williams is when he first when he first came on and he played. Mark Williams is not in the same. I mean, now is. Chalk and cheese them when he first came on tour. Stephen will tell you that in commentary. We, can, we remember watching him practice, but he got the cue ball much neater and tidier and closer in and became the brilliant champion that he is. Yep, that's here from Stephen. Yeah, it's definitely it's one of the keys of top snooker. The most important ball, I always say, is the the cue ball, you control that, makes the game a whole lot easier. It's also knowing the shots as well, before you can get down. Any chance of you becoming a positional coach, Stephen? Can't afford me. He didn't hear what Stephen said there. Smile on his face, this guy. He's a lovely, lovely lad, is this. Lovely family. And they're all here supporting him. And That's one of his biggest supporters, his lovely wife, Sophie, and Finley and Bailey. Two children are here, as well as his parents, Rob and Sonia, who travel all over to watch their son. One.
not a good chance just yet, but that was good queuing. Dead straight on the pink there. Blacks Sorry. out of commission at the moment. I think it's blocked into both corners. But he has a wonderful queue action, has Kyron. And this time, his position is spot on. But if he can get on one of the reds either side of the black, it would help. I mean, he's got the angle on the pink if he wanted to go into the reds, but there's, what, there's five reds available. Karen Wilson, 14. Very difficult for Karen just to get a rhythm going, but really he needs this and the final frame of this session to have any chance. Is he looking at using the jaw of the middle pocket to get back for safety? He did. <laughs> Wasn't sure what was going to happen. The red there. This is tough. Very good queuing again. Uh, this would be some shot if he could get onto one of the reds either side of the black from this position. If anyone can do it with the rest, it's Kyron. But what a shot this would be. to hit it with that pace and he got the cue ball exactly Karen where he wanted one. but didn't manage to knock the yellow in yeah I think he's losing a bit of self-belief now that he can do anything in this match Kyron Wilson it's just getting harder and harder Horrible place to be. One.
Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Not a good pack to go into, but we know with the Q power that Ronnie has, he generates lots of spin. Does the red pass the yellow to the middle? 24. Must be tight. Just about. 25. Usually the case when you're playing well, you do get the little run there and he didn't quite get into the reds, but that one would just go. It's when you're struggling, the red wouldn't have passed the yellow. 32. Thirty-three. Deliberately leave himself short on the red so he can open up the other five. Forty-one. He'll be disappointed. As he said in his interviews, it was his dream to get to the final of the World Championship. That's what the pinnacle every player's career is about, 44. but he's just not performed. He's not been up to the task. He could do with watching this. What do you think, Dennis? You have a tape of this and watch it back and just to see the mistakes he's made and how he can improve because, I mean, let's be fair, he's, you know, he's up against the best of all time, so no disgrace, but... There's been frames there. He could have 15. done things differently. He had a wonderful win against the defending champion, Judd Trump, knocking him out 13-9. And that unforgettable semi-final against Anthony McGill. We'll never see another frame. The Crucible quite like that. 57. But it's been tough. Got close to getting just one frame behind Ronnie, but it's all quite comfortable now for the five times champion. And he won't ease up one little bit. 64. 65. Seventy-two. No double, but once again, okay, Ronnie seven. O'Sullivan, with just 72. one chance, made yeah, that on. break of 72, <laughs> and Kyron thought that was the end of the session. Next You've got one. one more frame to go, Kyron. But Ronnie O'Sullivan gets another one on the board, and now leads by 16 frames to eight. Well, this is really tough on Kyron Wilson, but like all great champions, Ronnie O'Sullivan is doing what great champions do, John. When you've got your opponent there, yep. you finish the job. Pressing on, kicking on, and I'm going back to those two frames where Kyron had a chance to make clearances. That's what's changed the match. If he, if he, if he gets one of them, he's in there. The fact he lost both of them when he had chances and lifelines at the end of them, that's when Ronnie sensed 
you're not going to punish me when I miss. Yeah. And he's kicked on from there. Uh, we said that in studio last night, Steve. Yeah, we did. Uh, last night, the last frame of the session could have made such a difference, 10-7 to 9-8. He had to come out and get at least four all, and it's all gone wrong today. But he did look like he was in a good nick, but uh, not that... It, we, we, we've had a bit of fun in the studio talking about... Because sometimes at, at the end of the, the, the final session, if there's, uh, if there's too many... Not enough frames played, there's an exhibition played. But it looks like, because none of the players and commentators are really up there, it's going to be Alan McManus versus Radzi <laughs> for the exhibition. <laughs> I don't know whether Radzi's been practising. I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Maybe I don't he's know. had a lot of tuition. In fairness yeah. to Radzi, he's been working on his game, John. Yeah. So, he'll be disappointed as much as he would... No, I'm not saying he wants to sort of lose, but even if you're going to lose, make it close in a way. He wants to make it an event, you know? Of course so he does. Yeah. There is the problem that the embarrassment level comes in a little bit. He's just a little bit embarrassed out there, maybe. That's perhaps why he's not thinking clearly. Yeah. Uh, we're spending a lot of time talking about Carol Wilson. We should be spending the same amount of time talking about this fellow as well, because it'll be his first title, of course, since he beat Barry Hawkins in that famous final, 18-12 in 2013, when he hadn't played all year. Yeah, and there was much made at the start of the tournament. They were talking about no crowd coming in the crucible and all the rest of it and they were talking about great for the rookies and great for the guy. I think it's been great for him. I actually think it's been perfect for him. Lots of times he's come here, doesn't like the razzmatazz, doesn't like all the press being there, doesn't like walking in the venue and getting pestered. I think the way it's all turned out has been absolutely great for him. His demeanour has been totally different from the last few years. I mean, he sat in the chair last year and he looked beaten in the first round, which he was. And he's turned up this year, everything's been suiting to him. He's like been playing a snooker match in his front room. Well, uh, that's exactly what he said in some of his interviews. John's absolutely right, Steve. Yeah, and uh, and he's coped with the conditions as well as anybody else. And, um, you know, I think it's probably a foregone conclusion now he's going to get over the line in this final. And uh, not really put, trying to put it on to Stephen Hendry, but yeah, it, it brings into question whether he can win at least seven. And I think, you know, maybe he can now. Back to Dennis and Steve. What a great reception Karen got there. The crowd are really behind him now, Stephen. They want him to win this last frame of this session. Yeah, well, obviously, the, the crowd are delighted. We didn't think there'd be anyone in for the final, but they are. But now, they're, now they are there. They want to see a final. It doesn't look like they're going to see the close final they'd love, but if they've got tickets for tonight, they want to see as many frames as possible. If Ronnie wins this one, there might only be one frame tonight. And how close was that? I mean, he played this beautifully. I thought this was in. And he was nicely on the black as well. One. I remember going back uh, six, seven years ago, everyone was saying it's a young man's Eight. game. You have to be in your early 20s to win ranking events. Only 45. Mark Williams won the World Championship in his Nine. 40s. Stuart Bingham, uh, that wasn't the case. Interesting that Ronnie's gone and sat down while Marcel gets the pink in the correct position. Fifteen. Slightly rolled back, you're right, yeah. Slightly rolled back. It, it just rocked back there. It might have been touching the red. It mustn't be touching the red. Because I think the pink pot's from that position. You know, he's thinking a few shots ahead, is Ronnie. Uh, he still thinks it's to touching. Again.
It's not touching now. No. Who's got the best eyesight? Referee says it's not touching. Ronnie thinks it is. Sixteen. the blue this time to go into the bunch you would think 24 well maybe the yellow now that he's gone a bit too far it's a thinner blue though yeah you can lose a cue ball to corner pockets if you don't get this red full just played a little delicate shot 29 Sullivan, 29. Just went a bit too far for the blue to be able to crash into the reds. But not taking any risks. Even though he's got a 16-8 advantage. Tempted at all by the red to left corner. Still keeping the discipline. No need to take any undue risks anymore. Bigger decision this time because he can get his hand on the table. Red to either corner pocket. Well, he's playing the one that's got the most element of safety, the one in the pink spot. Right in the middle. Oh, that's a massive bounce of the cookie to hear it. One. Terrific pot, but as I mentioned before, when you're playing well, you get the little runs, and he got a cannon on the brown there that means he can cut the brown and get back up to the reds. There's the lovely yeah. silver lady the trophy that Ronnie has won on five occasions and he's well on his way to his sixth. To equal 12. Steve Davis and the great Ray Reardon. Still one behind 
the king of the crucible. Nice. They dominated for years, Steve Davis, Stephen Hendry. 13 titles between them. That was, that was always going to be a little tricky shot there, just with the, the shape of the four reds and the angle he had in the black, but played it with a little bit of extra pace. So he's got this red to right middle. That's a tricky little shot. 28. It's a lot easier when you're 16 in front and 50 odd points in front. Yeah, he's been schooled a bit in this final. Karen Wilson, he's someone who's just. Well, he's better than most. He's just a much better player than most players in the game. When he's more. on top form, almost everyone, but. Today has been a very solid performance from Ronnie. 30. Last night he was teetering a bit. He wasn't enjoying it, but today he's come out fresh and focused. Ronnie Sullivan. No, that was 32. an unforced error. Very surprising black off a spot. Maybe he was just getting too comfortable. Isn't enough on the table for Karen Wilson to win this frame. I know Ronnie O'Sullivan's got an unbelievable amount of supporters, but I think everybody in the Crucible would love to see Karen clear up here. One. Just reckoning up what he needs and Yeah, long way to go to win in this frame, but if he could at least keep running to needing two frames tonight. I'm sure Kyron would feel there's a slight glimmer there. Six. No, he's put it onto the near it. jaw. Seven. As Stephen said, there was a glimmer of hope there, but that has evaporated. Already needs a snooker. One. But he has been very focused this afternoon. And going into the crucible at nine o'clock this morning and spending quite a bit of time on the practice table Eight. seems to have done the trick. Doesn't matter about that. It's been Four a wonderful seven. session. Eight. For the five times champion, Karen Wilson. Well, he just couldn't get going. Missed a few little sort of positional shots that went astray. A few little easy pots made all the difference. And Ronnie O'Sullivan wins the session. And now he just needs one frame to lift his sixth world title. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Stephen. I love Stephen's phrase there, fresh and focused. What a different Ronnie O'Sullivan, John. Yeah, very much so. I'm um, going to hark back to those two frames, which I think were massively important. If he could have nicked them, it would have been a different scoreline, but he didn't. And then after that, Ronnie's just got stronger and pulled away, and Kyron, unfortunately, has got a little bit worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, Kyron's got the... 
It's going to come out this evening, basically, to just wait to be beaten. 7-1. Uh, yeah, yeah. tough 7-1. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan will be feeling wonderful. He's now going to get his dress suit on one more time to walk out to be crowned the King of the Crucible. Six World Championship wins, I think, is what he deserves. And he's got a chance for seven as well. Yeah. So have you. You've got to get your suit on as well, because we're going to be coming back. Yeah, but no world crown. <laughs> <laughs> You've got plenty of those, don't you worry. Yeah, yeah. Don't you worry. But just a tremendous, tremendous sportsman. That's what we're talking about here, John Parry. Yeah, I mean, last night he, he looked for all the world like he was he was gone. He was sitting in a chair and he was a bit shattered, but he's turned it round today and it was a, a deserved scoreline. Uh, one of the great stories, of course, of this year's Crucible Theatre show has been John Higgins' 147. One. Cue that in beautifully. Just a little bit too far for the blue, so that's why he's going to take the yellow. He's been a different player Three. today, hasn't he, Dennis? Completely different to the way he was yesterday. He looked very tired, drained. He's come out today, firing on all cylinders. Four. Been an awesome display this afternoon. I mean, the semi-final against Mark Selby was remarkable as well. Mm -hmm. He looked as if he was heading out. Mark Selby was playing Six. well, and Ronnie was having a, a little fling of the cue at all sorts, and then he produced three magical frames, including Seven. a break of 138. Nicely on the black. And he's got a couple of options of reds into the opposite corner pocket. Fifteen. Perfect. On the blue, just a stun down for. May stun down for the red, just above the black. But if he comes up short, he'll, he'll still be okay with a red into the centre. He's played that perfectly. 20. Twenty-one. Two of his five world titles that he won. The score line was 18-8. That was 2004 against Graham Dot. 28. 2008 against Ali Carter. 29. And every chance he could be lifting that silver lady again with an 18-8 scoreline. Yes, and of course, it'll be for the sixth time joining the likes of Ray Reardon and 36. Steve Davis. One more to go to equal the great Stephen Hendry. And I'm sure that will keep them going. 37. And it's a world championship that's had 45. everything, Dennis. Lots of wonderful stories, lots of drama. The 147 and those two semi finals. What a treat we've had over the last 17 days. 50. That's the end. And look at that in Wilson in the background. One of the nicest lads you could ever wish to meet. He's got all his family here with him, and he's got nothing to be ashamed of. He has put up 
a fantastic 58. display throughout this year's Betfred World Championship. He really has. 59. And if he carries on the way he's doing, it's only a matter of time before he does lift the world title. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And beautiful act of sportsmanship there, clapping for Ronnie O'Sullivan. 66. Well, could he finish with a century break? Come on, give us a century. He's made 12 century breaks. 17. Somebody in the audience said, make a century, Ronnie. 71. And he doesn't know it, but it passed him. He's 45 years of age. He's playing as good as he's ever played. 85. Oh, pull up, White. Pull up. As all great champions do, Dennis, they finish in style. Yeah. And they're certainly doing that now. Yeah. Don't hit the black full ball. Just flick off it. Flick the black. 96. Oh. Take your time, Ronnie. Oh, he, oh. oh he's miscued. Oh, Unbelievable, no century break. One opportunity and great sportsmanship from Kyron Wilson. And nice to see the two players having a chat there. Six world titles for Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan. Unbelievable. Just one away from Stephen Hendry's record. It's great to see them chatting away. But Ronnie O'Sullivan is the 2020 Betfred World Snooker Champion. Well played to both players. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been, without doubt, the most poignant build-up to any world championship we've had here in the 44 years at the Crucible. And before we interview these two Herculean men, on behalf of everybody connected with this fantastic event, we wanted to extend our gratitude to a number of people. Firstly, to tens of thousands of key workers up and down the country who we'll never meet. And thanks to them, all of us have got back to the job we love, to the sport we love, to the city we love. Equally, to all the familiar faces here at The Crucible, their staff and the World Snooker staff who've put an incredible amount of health and safety in place. You've never seen uh, so, many, uh, so many protocols backstage, so much hand sanitizer. Thanks to them, we have felt safe. And lastly, a thanks not only to these two, but to all 31 professional snooker players who turned up here in Sheffield on day one to bear their souls to the world and entertain us for 17 long days and remind us what a big part of our lives sport is and will continue to be for many years to come. And Kyron. I'd like nothing more than to give you a hug at the moment. I can't, for all the obvious reasons. This has been an absolutely incredible run to your maiden final. Only 30 men have ever played in the sports ultimate match. That's how hard it is to get here. You should be so proud of what you've achieved over these 17 days. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm 28 years old. I'm not going to beat myself up too much. I'm playing the greatest of all time. Um, for me, it was a, a dream come true, knowing that I was going to be playing Ronnie in the final. Obviously, you know, you can't respect him too much or else he'll walk all over you, which is what's happened to me today. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for me, look, it's, it's brilliant. I've got the two most important people to me sat right here. They'll learn from this. It'll make them stronger as well. Listen, you said you rolled over today, but you could have rolled over at 8-2 last night, and you got yourself right back in the hunt late on. You showed some real character last night. 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fighter. I'll always be a fighter. Um, I just I really struggled in the first session. I think we probably both had a little bit of a hangover from the semi-finals. Um, and then I just thought, you know, I just relax, let, let the shackles off, go for it. And um, I was just annoyed that World Snooker wouldn't let me carry on and play the whole match last night, to be honest with you. Well, you mentioned that semi-final. I've got to tell, I'm not sure whether your brother Taylor told you this, but he came into the press room and spoke to us and said, at the beginning of that frame, he didn't know whether he was going to wet himself or be sick. And he walked six miles around the circumference of Sheffield. There were millions of people glued to their televisions. You somehow scraped yourself off the floor. That semi-final victory to book this maiden final was breathtaking, and it will never, ever be forgotten. We're not quite sure how you came through that. I'm not sure myself. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, it, it could well have been Anthony stood here right now. Um, I got... Anthony, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was a bit lucky in, in the decider, but, yeah, it was a phenomenal match, one that I'll remember for the rest of my life. And, um, yeah, hopefully, obviously, me and Anthony have a few more battles here over the years. But, um, look, at the end of the day, the night belongs to Ronnie. He's, he was amazing throughout the final. Um, shown his class when he probably wasn't quite at his best and um, still stuck it out. So um, he was awesome this morning especially as well. I was very impressed. Well, that shows incredible class that you are once again turning the spotlight on Ronnie. One other thing I'd like to ask you, people sometimes say there are no characters in snooker anymore. It's absolute rubbish. Yours has been an incredible journey. It's only a few years ago you were off the tour, playing a little bit for fun, working in a bar, You've had these two fantastic young men added to your life. It's lit a fire underneath you, and here you are up at world number six. This has been a great journey, and it continues to be so. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's um, lockdowns lit a fire on my head as well. The hair dye. Um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, I've, I've got phenomenal family, friends, um, coach, sponsors, everything behind me. Um, I'm a very lucky young man at 28 to have what I have and be playing the sport that I love and it's given me an amazing life and to perform in front of you guys has, has been an honour and I'm, I'm glad that obviously the crowd were allowed in for the final. It's, it's been amazing to perform in front of you guys. Kyron, spoken like a true champion. You have won three ranking titles and hopefully there will be a triple crown triumph coming soon. I can't hand you the silver medal, but would you please step forward to collect your runner-up medal and your check, yeah, that one, and your check for £200,000. Kyron Wilson, ladies and gents. Can we hug? We've both been tested. Ladies and gents, we are in the presence of sporting greatness. History has been made tonight by Ronnie O'Sullivan. Absolutely incredible. Your sixth world title, and now you are tied with Reardon and Davis. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never really think about titles because when I was a kid, I never dreamed that I'd be here. I just was playing for the fun of the game, and I still try and play for the fun of it. But to be here and, you know, uh, have had all them victories and, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a dream, but it's, it's kind of becoming a bit of a reality as well. So it's nice to be living your dream in, in that sort of way, you know. Your last title was 2013. Was there a spell during those years where you thought, you might never get your hands on the silver lady again. Um, uh, yeah, you can never say never, but um, there was a part of me that decided that, you know, I didn't, probably didn't play enough and I still probably don't play enough to justify winning, you know, a tournament of this statue, you know, because it is, it's, it's an endurance test and if I'm not really an endurance type snooker player um, because I, I don't compete enough, but, you know, uh, the lockdown gave me a chance to play on some decent, you know, because I haven't even got a practice facility, believe it or not, so my friend installed a couple of tables in his office in London, so I was able to play on good tables for a change, which was great, and I come here feeling comfortable with my tools, really. So um, I had a half a chance. I never expected to win it, though, to be honest with you. <laughs> Spoken <laughs> with real modesty for a guy that's lifted it five times and now six. Ronnie, there have been so many great achievements down the years. Your first Triple Crown triumph at the age of 17 in 1993, winning this one after a year off, a 1,000 centuries, your 19th uh, Triple Crown title when you won the UK in 2018. Where does this sit 
in the all-time performances of your career. It's got to be right there near the top, surely. Listen, any world title you win's got to be up there. You know, um, it's just, it's just, it's great to be able to to win over the 17 days here. You know, you you come here, you got to play a lot of solid shots and be solid in in all departments. And you know, um, I, even though I might not have felt I'd done that, I must have done because these guys are too good on tour to give it to you. You know, and. I just want to say, you know, as well for Kyron, you know, he's he's a top top player. You know, he's improving all the time, and and all that, you know, he fell off the tour. He was always going to get back on the tour. When you got that desire and that hunger, and that belief in your ability, um, yeah, you might have to work in a bar for a bit. You might have to do bits and pieces, but deep down, that fire is is burning bright enough, so you you actually get there in the end. And uh, you know, so he's a winner, and he will win this tournament one day. Not to put too much pressure on him, but um, <laughs> he is he is a country mile above everybody else around his age, and. Um, he, and, and, and he'll be the first to admit that he's always watching the Higginses, the Williamses and, and, and the likes of them players because he wants, to, he wants to raise that bar as well. So when someone's that student about their sport, you know that there's a, they're going to have plenty of good days as well. So his, his time's definitely going to come. Beautifully said. All the pundits down in our studio in London are saying you are now unequivocally the greatest. 37 ranking titles, no one's more, won more. Triple crowns. Tying Hendry on seven, is it even a relevance? Are you happy to be with Steve on six? I'm happy to be on, a, on, a, on one. I was happy to get one at one stage, you know. Two was great, and once I hit four, I went, you know, I can call myself like one of the greats, you know, because all the greats seem to have done it. I, I look at John Higgins and go, He's a great, you know, so if he's won it four times, that's what you've got to do to be a great. Probably put Mark Williams in there, just about. <laughs> well, he's won three. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll put it at four. So anything above four, you've got, you know, you, you kind of, you're in that sort of fantastic company, I suppose. But um, I think, you know, the, 30s, the way I look at it is, though, like, it's, with, with the records with Hendry, it's like, I, if, if, if I've played more tournaments than him to get there, I think who got there first? I'm not sure, so you'll have to ask someone of the stats, but I'm always, if I've played a thousand tournaments and he's only made 500 and I'm just about beating his records, then I'd rather have Stephen's CV, do you know what I mean? So you, you'll have to get your statistic book out for that. But I suppose my, my thing has been longevity, you know, I've, I kind of, I go in and out of form, you know, my, my, my mind can wander sometimes, but then I just get a little bit of a taste for it and think, come on, let's see if you still got it. <laughs> and start to, you know, try and, try and have a go again, like I, like I have done this tournament, you know. And just finally, a word for your fans. They have followed you for decades. This is a, a very difficult time for so many people. Yeah. Once again, they have turned out in great numbers. This has been a journey, not just for you, but for everybody who supported you. And it must give you great pride that you've given people something to focus on other than the virus over the last 17 days. Yeah, well, listen, I want to thank my sponsors as well, Affinity. They've been fantastic, you know. And without their support, without 19.com support, you know, I wouldn't be able to put the hours in and sacrifice some of the things I have to sacrifice. Because like Kyron says, we all need support. You know, we play snooker, but it's nice to have people around you that are able to support you through that so as it, you can make it such a comfortable ride. And hopefully Affinity are going to try and create a wonderful app where they can sort me out the perfect cue action because they're good at doing that <laughs> stuff. So I, I've given them a task. I said, come on, create it so as I can, like, you know, get the perfect cue action. Because, you know, that's, as snooker players, that's all we want to do. That's all, listen, when you put in five or six hours in a day, it's not because you like the sound of the balls hitting the back of the pocket. It's like, can I be in it straight enough so as when I come and play under pressure, it stands up. And that's why we put all the hours in, not because... You know, we'd rather be sitting there watching Match of the Day, to be honest, or watching you off hanging off of some boat interviewing someone while he's doing the <laughs> rowing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a long time ago, as was your first major triumph. 27 years of longevity, ladies and gentlemen. There is only one Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> and Ronnie... There is an old silver lady who's been waiting for a kiss for seven years. Would you please raise the trophy? You are the 2020 Betfred World Snooker Champion. Congratulations, Ronnie O'Sullivan. You are looking at one of the greatest sports stars this country has ever produced. No doubt about it. And he has fine television choice as well. He watches Match of the Day, JP. Oh, <laughs> man of my own heart. But we really, should, we really should cherish him, to be honest with you. I mean, he's got 
Fantastic longevity, but how many more years he'll go on for playing, I don't know, but it's a treat watching him play. When he plays properly, there's nobody quite like him. I think he's the... Uh, I think it's officially the only player to have ever won in three separate decades. So he talks about his longevity, and he should be proud of that. That's such a tough thing to do. The standard ever-improving, and he's still out there at the top. And uh, I think he's capable of, uh, of going even further, uh, certainly into his 50s, should he so wish. These are brilliant pictures, aren't they? Six world titles, John. Phenomenal achievement and, you know, draws level with the man sitting next to me, which is no mean feat in itself, and uh, he could carry him. If it's all down to him. If he wants to carry on and put the hours in and keep playing and competing, he could, um, he could get up to Stephen's record, that's for sure, and win another one. And we spoke about this during the tournament as well, didn't we, Steve and John, about the very fact that he's got to be up there with the greatest sports stars that have played the sports. And I was saying to you just a few weeks back, I did a radio interview just a few weeks before the Crucible started, and people were saying to me, where does watching Ronnie O'Sullivan rank with being pitch side at World Cup finals mm. and Six Nations matches? And I said, right at the very top. It's a treat to come to, to the Crucible and to come and see him play live. And when he's absolutely at it and at his best, there's nothing quite like it. And the fact he's so ambidextrous, I mean, he throws the cue over and puts, plays shots left-handed, other people couldn't play right-handed. I mean, that is just a scary amount of talent that he's got. And let's not forget, by the way, Jason, he's had to dig in as well here. He was 6-2 down to Mark Williams in one of the rounds for the final. He was 16-14 down to Mark Selby. And as good as he is, that's how hard he had to work to yeah. win this. And when he started smashing around that pink, we were thinking, is he on his way out? Well, he, he came in with the game plan to, uh, to play a fast attacking game and uh, it was a risky one, but it paid off in the end. Wouldn't it be nice to see him win Sports Personality of the Year? It's not been the best year for sport. Surely he's got to be up there in the nominations this year. It's been severely disrupted, of course. And this is wonderful, isn't it? Because, you know, we were very anxious and worried, weren't we, John, about fans being in for the final and how lovely to see Ronnie showing that trophy off to those fans who simply adore him. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, you know, he, he does various interviews and sometimes he says he's not bothered and he's not, look at him there. He's up because he's bothered. He wants to win. He, goes, it's, he wouldn't put the hours in in the club if, he didn't, if it didn't mean a lot to him. And uh, to win it six times is one heck of an achievement. He's, he's more of a student of the game you would ever think. You think he just goes out on the table, crash, bang, wallop. He studied the game, he studied his action, his technique, he's tried to work out the best ways to play the game. Even if it, when it goes wrong, OK, he sort of says, oh, I don't care about it. He does. You don't stay in the game that long without absolutely loving the game of snooker and wanting to get the best out of yourself. Obviously, he's been through ups and downs in, in, you know, from a psychological state, but he's always had snooker at the back of his mind, even if he's been up and down in the snooker world. He's always wanted to achieve perfection and also tactically he's so wonderful as well.